Hey, Ange. Hey, Leslie. How are you? Oh, it's Leslie now. That's because we have a guest. We have a guest. We have, to be, we have to be proper for about five minutes. And That's then... all I'll give us, five minutes. Um, hey, folks. Welcome to our podcast. We are Leslie and Angela. We have been best friends since uh, 1977. That's about 47 years. And um, our um, work in the world right now is to um, bring information that allows you to expand your thinking, um, to think deeply, and to act boldly. Welcome. We have an amazing guest today. Oh my gosh. We, we Listen, the first, the first few minutes um, of of this recording, we've been giddy. So this is this is us finding a calm place after Leslie prayed, and, yes. and, and we got we got calm. But don't think for a moment that um, this is uh, just regular degular. This is a regular degular um, uh, episode. We're excited to be here. So Leslie, tell them about um, introduce this podcast. What well, is, what's the name of it? What are we doing? <laughs> welcome to another episode of Black Boomer Besties from Brooklyn. Brooklyn. All right. So this beautiful um, empress that we have here today, um, if you don't recognize her, you will soon be um, just uh, a fan as, as I am. She's a, she's a friend and she is Jackie Shelton Green, the North Carolina Poet Laureate. I'm going to um, read her bio. I'm going to read it slowly. I'm going to give you guys um, time to really um, let this information just seep, seep into you. Um, she's very special. She's, she's, um, we've been gifted in having her voice and her way of seeing the world um, expanded through her work as a poet laureate. And um, so I'm going to jump in and tell you about uh, Jackie Shelton Green. Um, okay. Jackie Shelton Green is the ninth poet laureate of North Carolina, appointed in 2018. She's the first African American and third woman to be appointed to the North Carolina Poet Laureate and reappointed in 2021 for a second term by Governor Roy Cooper. She is a 2019 Academy of American Poet Laureate Fellow, a 2014 North Carolina Literally Literacy Hall of Fame inductee, a 2009 North Carolina Piedmont Laureate appointment, 2003 recipient of the North Carolina Award for Literature. Jackie Shelton Green teaches documentary poetry at Duke University Center for Documentary Studies and the 2021 Frank B. Haynes Writer in Residence at UNC Chapel Hill. Additionally, she received the George School Outstanding Alumni Award in 2021. Mm. Her publications include Dead on Arrival, Masks, Dead on Arrival, and New Poems, Conjure Blues, Singing a Tree into Dance, Breath of the Song, published by Blair Publishers, Feeding the Light, I Want to Undie You, my favorite, published by Jakar Press. I want to undie you English and Latin bilingual edition published by um, the Berg Publishers, June 20, June, Juneteenth, 2020. She released her first LP poetry album, The River Speaks of Thirst, published by Soul City Sounds and Clearly Records and released a CD, I Want to Undie You in 2021. Mm. Jackie Shelton Green is the owner of Sister Right, providing retreats for women writers in Sedona, Arizona, Martha's Vineyard, Ocracoke, North Carolina, Northern Morocco, and Tullamore, Ireland. In 2021, the Arts Club of Chicago premiered a commissioned body of work in collaboration with um, Flutronics for the Black Is series 
and was performed in April 2022 by Flutronics and Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra. She ser- by the way, if you guys want to see um, her poetry in motion, we'll, we'll yeah. put some links there. It's uh, um, poetry, music, and m- motion. It's a beautiful um, combination through uh, Jackie's, Jack- Jackie's work as a poet. She serves as the poetry editor for Walter Magazine and an appointment as the Poet Laureate in Residence at the North Carolina Museum of Art. Additionally, she has been recognized on the Forbes Magazine 50 Over 50 Lifestyle List for 2022. Welcome. Welcome, Jackie. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. And thank you so much, Leslie. Um, First of all, I really feel so special to be honored to be embraced in this manner. I truly appreciate it. I just wanted to say there's one correction about my bio. Sure. It's an Italian, uh, mm. it's an Italian, not Latin um, okay. mm-hmm. translation of, of the book, I Want to Undie You. But thank you, and I'm so honored to be with both of you. Oh. <sighs> Listen. We finally yes. got you here. I, <laughs> we finally got Let you me here. jump in before, because I'm going to be quiet which is not like me, but I'm going to say that it is my pleasure to finally meet you in this way because I've actually known you for a number of years. Why? Because Angela speaks of you so frequently. My friend Jackie, and Jackie says this, and Jackie does this. And I learned this from Jackie, or I heard this from Jackie. (laughs) So you've kind of permeated our um, life for the last couple of years. And I just appreciate the wisdom that Ange has shared that you've imparted to her. So I thank you. Don't make me get emotional. I do the ugly cry, (laughs) but thank you. Oh, thank you. And it's it's been not just me. I mean, Angela is wise and full of excitement and wonderment and innovation. And I mean, look what you're doing. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's funny how you meet somebody in one track and here we are doing something totally different. So absolutely. Uh, absolutely. And same thing, Leslie, she talks. She talks <laughs> I remember there's one time, uh, Jackie, that we were actually having lunch. I think we had had lunch and we were sitting in the car and I got a call from Leslie and um, it was about Omari getting a call about a kidney. Um, um, as you guys remember, Leslie's son, uh, my nephew has um, had a, a kidney transplant a few years ago. And um, I was I was in the car with Jackie and, and oh, oh, Jackie. <laughs> so they have they have not yeah, met face to face, but um, definitely they're, they're, all of our lives have been intertwining for a few years now. Um, Jackie, I asked you if you would please read us a poem to start us off. And if you could just um, do that now, we'd appreciate it. So I'm reading Daughters of This Dust from a publication, Read Feeding the Light. Daughters of This Dust, one. Feeling real good, big boned, mahogany ass shelf, indigo left eye. Same eye grandma found rolling around in the cat's bowl. I teach geometry from unshaven armpits. Geography begins between my toes. Five different patois sing your name backwards. Two. Dawn colors my back mauve. You mistake it for Argentina. Shipwrecked soul. You pierce me with the knives of hunger. I cry a shark song for the loneliness at the bottom of your eyes. Three, impregnating condensed light, weaving new pigmentation into right eye. Four, only you believe the blue eye when she said she swam with mermaids, danced calypso beneath the sand, removed Oshun curses. Five, your palms peel back my eyes and stone the devils living there. Okay. Okay. So we realized that there's so much that we could talk about um, and 
um, but and we also realize that that um, we can't we can't keep Jackie forever. Um, she, <laughs> she she has she a has life. poet laureate work to do. <laughs> She's got a life to live, a professorship, <laughs> and all of those things. All the things, all the laundry, things. laundry, laundry, <laughs> wife, wife ship, mothership, all the things, all yes, the things. Yes. Um, but this this um, this uh, episode, which will probably be in two parts, to be, to be honest, um, it's going to be entitled "A Time of Truth Telling." Um, that is mm. um, a, a, a title language that I actually pulled from um, something that I heard Jackie talk about some time ago, and I um, what I thought would be great if is if one part was kind of truth telling around community and the second part would be around truth telling um, in a in a kind of personal way. So this part we're going to talk about community. We're going to talk about um, what's happening in the world right now um, in in terms of um, Mm -hmm. black women. Um, Kamala is is running for President Kamala Harris. Let me give her her full on government name. Kamala Harris is running for president of the United States. Um, we will speak of her in um, the the most revered sense of um, of respect as Kamala. We're going to talk about um, her and you know how it plays out. You know, black women saving the world again. It seems. <laughs> And um, and all all of those ideas is what we're going to kind of jump into as we talk about um, truth telling in community. So I want to start with um, Leslie and I have been exploring moving abroad, right? And I know Jackie, you do a lot of a lot of traveling. Um, how do you feel about? Do you feel like we're abandoning America and our right to be here and her resp- our responsibilities to stay here by thinking about moving abroad. What do you think about that? Well, the globe was built to be explored mm-hmm. and to be inhabited. And I don't have any feeling that I am neglecting the United States or abandoning anything. Um, I think the question itself comes from that place of being colonized for so long that we feel like we have some sense of I'm abandoning my country. Mm -hmm. I I, I remind myself, this is a country that I love very dearly, but it does not always love me back. Mm -hmm. And I remember that James Baldwin said something very poignantly, you know, many years, I think that, I mean, his voice is just resonating from the grave now with so much wisdom and so many things that, I just point on for right now is that the United States needs to fall in love with itself again. Mm. Like, like you cannot love others if you cannot love yourself. And I think I have to let love myself enough Mm -hmm. and love my family enough and love the ones around me enough to want to flourish, to be nourished and so I don't have a restriction around geography, right. you know, like like where I receive that that mm-hmm. nourishment that I need to thrive. Yes. And living right now in the South in North Carolina, uh, I'm I'm very frightened by many many realities that are real, mm-hmm. of gun toting folk, mm-hmm. of just going to the grocery store, and there are people yes. in the grocery store, and I'm always like. You know, I I almost want to walk up to people and say, why do you think you need a gun in the grocery store? Mm -hmm. You have a three-year-old on your hip, Mm -hmm. right above your gun. Her foot is touching the top of the gun. Why, you know, like, why is this a necessity for you? And the thing is, is that person does not owe me anything to even answer that question. Mm -hmm. You know, but I have to ask myself, how do I want to live? Mm. And it's not a way that I want to live. And, yeah. you know, it is a it is a question because I am now 71 years old. My husband is 79. These are questions that, you know, at our age, we think about a little more than if we were still in our 50s. Yeah, yeah. 
you know, Mm -hmm. and we have family. And what does that look like? Mm -hmm. But I would like to live outside of the country at least three to four months out of a year. I would like to be somewhere else. And that's about, that's about my, my resistance. My resistance is thriving. Yes. You know, because every day something tried to kill me. And Mm. and the sister Lucille Clifton said that, that every morning I get up, something has failed again. Mm. And every morning that I can do that. But I worry right now. And the thing is, we don't know where that, that thread is going to come from at any given time. Yeah. But I want I, I want joy. I want joy. I want joy for my children. I want joy for our grandchildren, for our great grandchildren. I want joy for my neighbors. I want joy for people who even know that they need joy. Yeah. <laughs> like, like they, yeah. I want joy. I want a, I want a want for them. Right. They might have given up on it. You want it for them. <laughs> right. So sure. that's kind of my response is no, I don't I don't have any unpatriotic or feeling that I owe somebody anything mm-hmm. or that anybody owes me anything. That's, that's mm-hmm. the other piece, you know, um, mm-hmm. that's the other piece for me because whatever I do feel that's, owed, it ain't coming. It's not happening. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's not happening. So. And if you leave, it's not that you, you give up the, 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 the right to it. If, if, if you leave, you know, if something is coming, you're, 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 that's right. That's right. And the thing is, is that why am I still a a United States citizen? You know what I mean? Exactly. And people who don't look like me leave every day. Yes. Leave every day and become expats. No one's asking that question. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. I don't ask myself those questions. There there are far more important questions like, like where, how far my money's going to (laughs) go, safety issues, Mm -hmm. politics. Is it, you know, is this a, a good place for me as a black woman to thrive Mm -hmm. as an elder to thrive Mm -hmm. Um, because ageism is real sexism racism in this culture they're real they're real in other cultures also yes yes Um, but i think that we need to be revived restored Mm -hmm. and find our places and our spaces where we become refueled yes Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think we're all so exhausted that that, you know, stepping aside, stepping away mm-hmm. is a way to restore. Mm-hmm. I mean, we have been fighting for so long that this is like, this is not a new fight. This is just more of the fight. Yes. And a more intensified way mm-hmm. and a more really and a, and a f- more fierce, exhausting way mm-hmm. because it's more than just the, the physicalness, the physicality of the fight. It's the emotional and spiritual wear. Absolutely. And the indoctrination. I mean, you know, our bones carry memory. So we're already carrying in our DNA, you know, memory of the middle passage and mm-hmm. and yeah. carrying, I, I believe in something called uh, genetic deja vu. Mm-hmm. You know, like my yeah. spirit, my DNA sometimes dials up uh, memories that I realize I was never in that place. This is from this is an ancestor's recessive memory that's flowing through me. And it, it comes through in your writing all the time. Mm. You know, all the time. It's like how 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 could you possibly have this imagery and, and you just kind of answer that for me. I've been consuming a, a few of your books that I that I, I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of into you, um, yeah. and, and that is the that when you just said that it answered so many questions about the imagery that you paint in 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 your writing about you know where where that's coming from. But Leslie um, talks about this weathering um, all the time. You know, just the. Um, the you put two words together you put you put fierce and what was the other one fierce and um gosh i forgot the other one but it's kind of like we always think about the fierceness of black women but we don't think about the the that 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 wear the fatigue you know the wearing of us the fatigue of black women Mm -hmm. for sure for sure yeah yeah Ooh, fierce and 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 fatigue we got to put those together but not just that, but the need to give ourselves permission to rest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, that's a big, right. 
that that's a big big the, the word permission is a word that um the word permi- what we what we ask permission of ourselves for and what we require of ourselves mm-hmm. you know th- those mm-hmm. have been two big things for me like what do i require of myself and what do i grant myself permissions for and those yes. become things that especially when i'm working with with I don't want to just say writers, but creative makers. Those are the two questions I pose with them. You know, what is your relationship with your writing? Mm-hmm. You know, and I think when we're talking about leaving a place, I ask people, so what is your relationship with the place that you're leaving? You know, are you leaving because it's a cool thing to do right now? Is it, you know, like, what is your relationship with your creativity? What is your relationship with your grief? Mm-hmm. Um, because I think that, Sometimes we get into reactive mode. Yes. Things are happening so fast that we go into reactive yeah. mode. And I think that's when we start creating diseases, diseases. Mm. I remember when um, O.J. Simpson's mother had the heart attack, you know, during his, I think it was during the trial. Mm-hmm. And I remember my mother, her response, we were watching the news together and she said, of course, what else could she do? You know, like that, that, mm-hmm. Her, mm-hmm. you know, her heart yes. her response, but she had a yes. heart attack. Right. Yeah. You know, this is my child. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And I just, I never forgot thinking about that, how the body will react on your behalf. Mm, for sure. not processing. Whether it's <laughs> as a physician, obviously I see all types of pathologies, but... There are some things, you know, when people go into a doctor or whatever, and they say, you know what, something's just not right, or something's wrong. And we look for the physical organic things that a test or lab test can come up. And sometimes you don't find it. Right. You know, and it might be more in the emotional realm, or as you just said, in our bones, in the genetics of our systems that there is ill feeling and dis-ease. Yeah. And and I think sometimes we create so much disease in our lives. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I, I mean, it's almost like sometimes when I think about just this pathology of this whole conversation, you know, just the choreography of it, of it all, how in someone's lifetime, You have all of these external forces that shape who you are. And it should be the other way around. (laughs) It should be shaping the world around us to be what we desire of it in order to live in it in a positive way. And yet all of that external energy and these external crises that I have, they shape us. Mm -hmm. And how how do we get out of that? How do we break that? That pattern, you know, how do we walk away mm-hmm. from that? And yeah. you know, when, when the whole nap ministry came out, you know, <laughs> like, okay, well, somebody just said it, you know. <laughs> yeah. Power yeah. to rest, yeah. you know, yeah. and our our resistance is taking care of ourselves. Yeah. Our resistance is stepping in these spaces where when we walk into the door, people look at us like, Why are you here? Mm-hmm. You know, is is mm-hmm. our resistance is to take up space. Yes. Absolutely. You know, with our voices, Absolutely. with our bodies, wow. taking our children to all the places that were denied to to our, you know, foremothers and forefathers, and 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 helping them to understand you can be anywhere in this world where you want to be. Mm-hmm. Wow! Absolutely. You know, that's the the other piece of it is there is a globe out there. Why should black people be stuck in America? I, I'd like to ask. <laughs> I, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, okay, we yeah. we did the cotton for you. You right. notice <laughs> I had a big thing of cotton behind me. Yes, comes, yes. Comes from a, a black owned, um, what was a cotton plantation. This family, uh, generations later, repurchased it and they grow cotton. I for, think I've heard of them. And I think I've heard of them as well. They, 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 it's almost like it's, um, I forget, it's like a cotton gold. It's, 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 it's some right. imagery it's around the valley. They're in North Carolina. Ah, in North Carolina. I didn't know they were in North Carolina. Yeah. So 
I mean, we've done your cotton. We built your buildings. You know what I mean? It's like, I can go now. Uh, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, like, how do we become untethered mm. to a country oh, yeah. that really isn't my country? Yes. Yes. You talked about um, James Baldwin and there's so many um, who in in the 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 the, the, the uh, another time of extreme um, racism when they left and went to Europe and as you said it's not like these things don't exist in other places but sometimes yeah. it's just the idea of at least let it look a little different <laughs> you know what I mean yeah. we know yeah. where this is cutting us yeah. you know let let let's 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 just try let's just try something else and and knowing that we have the the agency to pick ourselves up and 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 go elsewhere you know just the empowerment of that is in and of itself um a uh something that we deserve you know what i mean mm-hmm. granting ourselves permissions to not have to have permissions i mean like you know like whose permission do i need other than my family do you know what i'm saying to yes, I do. uproot myself yes as a very the very notion of a nationalistic kind of presence that I have to have permission from yes. or feel some kind of way about it. Right, right. Enslave my ancestors. Yes. You know, brought them here unwillingly. Yeah. So, you know, what are, what are the permissions we also need to be untethered from? Right. And, and, and the, the systems and the, and the people. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, And I think when I think about, you know, like that word, like I've heard a lot of Americans say, well, I would like to leave, but we, you know, we have to stay here and fight for America. Yes. Yes. I have that. Asked, what does that mean? Like, what does that translate into though? Like, tell me, tell me what that looks like because we've been doing it since we came out of the womb. Right. It's fighting. Yeah. Not just for our own breath, but for everybody else's breath too. Mm-hmm. And that notion you're talking about, you know, black women again at this vortex of saving the world. I've never mm-hmm. seen myself that way. And I don't want to see myself that way, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Is that, that that's that's not a responsibility I'm willing to take on. That it's my responsibility as a black woman to save the world. Yes. It's, is, you know, it's this time to stand down. But, I mean, but, but at the age where, where we are, we're, you know, I'm 62 years old at this point. It's like. What one, what more do I have to prove to others and to myself? But two, as a human being, I'm tired. I get that, Les. I, I feel it. I know it. And I also know that there is such a sense of, man, if, if not for... That, that is why I'm excited. I was excited when I saw how many black women got together, whatever the number is, 40,000 black women on the call um, mm-hmm. to, to, in support of, um, of Kamala. Um, that knowledge of our power um, allowed me to, 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 to wake up with, with a little more lightness today because yeah. I, I, I I believe in the power of black women. Do you know what I right. mean? So it's kind of this duality around the responsibility, but also I know that when we unite, we win. So mm-hmm. let's talk about that a little bit. Well, I I hear where you're coming from and it's a beautiful thing that we're at this juncture to witness the power of black women. Mm-hmm. So my forecast is she will win. Mm-hmm. Obama won to. Yes. She cannot be more as a black female president. She will never be more than the entities, the cabinets, the all the different branches than they will support her in doing. So, so this is what we forget. Yes. We can get us there. Mm. But it's more than her being just like it was more than Obama being he didn't become our president he was the president of the united states he Indeed. couldn't do more for me and less for somebody over here correct mm-hmm. and i'm gonna say this it will probably annoy a lot of people but politics is still politics amen capitalism 
Industrialism is what is driving this culture. That is the only thing. That's the only thing that's driving this culture. Mm -hmm. So, Mm -hmm. yes, I'm right there with all the sisters. Mm -hmm. The other part of that, though, is I don't believe when we get her elected, we're going to save the world. Amen. (laughs) I mean, yeah, I pray that she can get some things done, that she'll have a platform and that there will be people that would help her uplift and execute a platform that serves all the people of these United States in the best way. Mm -hmm. I will wait and see what happens when she's elected. But see that, see everything gets branded. Can we elect her? Yes. Can we save the world? I hope, I hope we, not. <laughs> you know, and do we need to? I mean, I took my tape off when I left the hospital earlier. <laughs> what world you know? are you, you know, it's kind of like, what world are you talking about? Yes, yes, like, yes. What world, world are you talking this? about? Can we save the world? It's, is it worth saving? Is this the world where, that... Where <laughs> is that? Yes, yes. Is this what we I want know. to preserve and save? <laughs> tear, you know, there are people that say, tear it all down. Yes, amen. <laughs> I think that there is a lot of of beauty and power inside of the fire. Yeah. You know, to to start over. To start over. Do I have can I translate that into a vision? No. Right. But I do believe that there is power and reformation and restoration and transformation. Mm-hmm. You know, we we all know. We all know yeah. that it, I guess this metaphor of, you know, people people burning off fields, just fabulous fields, and I could never understand. And then the next spring, it's the most glorious, vibrant yeah. wildflowers you've ever seen in your life. And, that, and I get it. Yeah. Sometimes we've got to burn the field. 